But, uh, <laughs> yeah, congratulations all round, quite deservedly. The margin's still 40 seconds, but take nothing away from Norway. They've uh, done exceptionally well here tonight. Look at the pressure here, Czech Republic, Italy and Germany for the, th for the bronze medal. Big moment for the Italians. They've been holding on to third, but they find themselves down in lane five for the final shoot of the night. Henkel for Germany. Varikova for Czech Republic, and then the Italians. One more for Italy. Is it going to be a podium oh. finish? Oh, fantastic shooting from her. Now, who can challenge the Italians? The Czech Republic in a little bit of bother. Henkel of Germany. One more shot, one more target. Surely this has to go down if she wants to get herself on the podium. It does go down. So the chase is on. France in a little spot of trouble. Anais Bescon is going to have to ski her socks off if she's going to catch. Germany and the Czech Republic. What's the margin between third and fourth? Mike, uh, it's some 14 seconds, 100 meters or so. Italy are not safe quite yet. No, they're not. I'm just trying to look at the last lap. Uh, Germany, in fact, Henkel went out some 15 seconds behind. I think she will pull this back. She did catch some 14 seconds last time. Rungaldier needs some help out there if uh, she's going to hold off the host nation. Well, the fans want, uh, want Henkel to win. Biathlon, I guess, would like to see Italy on the podium. Oh, astonishing. How many of those hit the prone target? I think three of them hit the prone and two are edge shots for the prone target. That's amazing shooting. And so much more steady. Zaitseva was good, Mike, but she wasn't as convincing as Berger. She was moving. You mentioned as she moved the rifle a lot. Henkel just suffered from the pressure. She thought, I might lose the bronze medal here. As soon as you start thinking, it, it changes things. Where does this one go? Oof. Well, one miss went high right, another went low right. Indicating she's snatching the trigger, a bit of fear, a bit of tension. Understandable. Well, those are the positions with just 2,000 meters to go. We should get another split time at around 5.2 with just 800 meters to go. Norway already through that stage of the race. Uh, here comes Tora Berger. Luxury of uh, how much of a gap has she got now? It's been uh, a fantastic performance from her. Oh, 40 Some seconds. 40 seconds clear. Well, here come Russia. From 40 seconds behind, the margin growing a little. Zaitseva is only just off the ski speed of Tora Berger, but uh, was never really given an opportunity to challenge. And look how much she's lost. I know that Zaitseva feels she's safe in second, but losing six seconds. And it just shows that Tora Berger, she's like a machine. She doesn't, she doesn't back off. She wants to keep that same strong race feeling. That's Romania behind Norway, who have now been lapped and... Uh, will not complete the race today. They'll get as far as that last shoot. So Tora Berger just pushes and pushes and pushes. She can uh, certainly afford to ease up and save herself for the rest of the weekend. She must know absolutely that she's got this huge margin because Zaitseva hadn't even landed or was just about to land when Tora Berger left the range. Henkel's caught. Czech Republic, she's got uh, Italy in her sights. Well, this is the toughest climb. If Italy with Alexia Runcaldia can go over the top of the climb with uh, a lead of five or six seconds, they might just survive. But Runcaldia's tempo has dropped away. Now the Italians giving her as much support as they possibly can. But that gap has dropped from 15 seconds to about 150 centimeters. So a long ski in with the Norwegian flag for Tora Berger. It's more success. And uh, by my calculation, they go to the top of the Nations Cup standings with that victory. Their second relay win of the season they'll be in bib number one or the yellow bib when it comes to the world championships in Nova Mesto and uh, they must be brimming brimming with confidence how much of that was due to the fact that Flatland took the second leg on her first race back oh, totally reliable I think she only missed one shot but she had a decent ski speed in fact a very good ski speed well this team is going to be hard to beat judging by what we've seen tonight that just the 19 year old Fenn on the left she started for them
you don't often want to put such a young athlete first, but she copes with the pressure so well. Well, Italy haven't given up quite yet. Don't get too confused. Here come Russia. Uh, good run uh, all through 41 shots. Remember, only one target miss. That came from Shamilova in the standing position. Glazarina, Vilikina, Shamilova, Zaitseva. It's uh, a strong squad, and they do have Urlova still to race. So uh, perhaps room for a few changes at the World Championship event. I think out in the track, it's uh, the Czech Republic, Svarikova, that's uh, going to give Henkel the chase to the line. Yes, yeah, Svarikova pushing hard, but uh, nothing decided. Rincaldia of Italy hasn't been shaken off. Well, she hadn't at the top of the hill, but uh, a good oh. descent. Uh, and that is uh, Svarikova. Is that Italy just in front of the Czech Republic? I think it might have been a brilliant descent. What a hit. Uh, Henkel Rinca must, she must have fallen. Yeah, Henkel, must, something must have gone wrong from her. So Italy, is this Italy coming in? No, it's uh, one of the other teams that's been lapped and the Italians with Alexia Rincaldi have blown away in the last uh, 500 metres. Apologies for that little bit of confusion. So a good comeback from the Czech Republic. Vitkova Sukolova really was the key leg for them, the second leg, and they're going to get a well-deserved third place ahead of the Germans, who will not be happy with that. Fourth place, 155 behind. They need Magdalene Neuner if they want to be assured victory. And then, of course, the Italians dropping sadly to fifth, but still an outstanding performance from them. Well, the crowd uh, was so quiet there. They were hoping, I think, for a German podium position. But uh, Czech Republic, with the World Championships going there, what, the 7th of February, they really are an inspired team. I do remember once, though, the Czech Republic women's team took the title at a World Championships. That was way back in 1993 in Borovic, Bulgaria. Only 36 World Cup points for the Ukrainian team for finishing in seventh, opposed to the 60 that Norway win. And Belarus coming in in eighth, uh, not unexpected. Uh, a little, it's a shame we don't see Domrashva up with the best, but let's try and find out how she's done on this final leg. She was almost three minutes behind at the start of the last leg. So she's at three seconds faster than Tora Berger on this leg. And that's competitive there. Tora Berger surely had to have had the fastest time on the, well, the second fastest time now with the Domracheva coming in. Belarus and Slovakia, eight and nine. Incidentally, uh, the programme for this week, the men's relay tomorrow night, same, same time, 18.15 local time, that's European time, start for the men's 4 by 7.5, the women's sprint on Friday, the men's sprint on Saturday, and then we're back to the mass start for Sunday. That should be two cracking races, 1 o'clock and 3.30 European time, the start times for those mass starts on Sunday. So do uh, make a note in your diary for them. Team 20, exceeding expectations, the Austrians. And uh, Schwabel, Romana Schrempf, uh, who we've seen a lot on the World Cup, Rieder and Hauser, two relatively unknown names coming in on legs three and four. That's not a bad run for them, 11th, they'll definitely be happy, Mike. And the best shooting we've seen from the Austrians for a long, long time. Yes, now, unlike the Italians, the Austrians were very late in developing a women's, a women's team, and uh, now they're just both becoming to, beginning to come through into, well, top 11 for Austria, and fifth, that was great from Italy, and, and so could have been a medal. The Americans faded a little. They had a very good start with Cook and Dunkley, Studebaker and Barnes taking legs three and four, and the Americans 429. Their shooting record today, uh, has been eight misses, no penalty loops, but eight misses in all, which on a normal relay would be okay, but the conditions here have been so benign that really uh, five or six should be the most spare rounds required. The Russians making a point, only requiring one, equaling the best relay performance of the season so far. Will we see the perfect relay run at some stage this season? Nova Mesto, it's unlikely. The conditions there are usually really windy. Oh, that's good. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it harder. But it's strange as well. Last week it was Ukraine, France, and then Germany and Oberhof in the women's relay. And this week it's Norway, Russia, Czech Republic. A complete turnaround. I love the way the women's field is now so competitive. You just can't have a bad, even one of your athletes can't have a bad day on the range. China, 15th. 
Well, it started pretty well for the Chinese. Just have a look and see where they were at the halfway stage. Uh, China were in 10th position, but they, did, uh, they didn't shoot so well, to be honest. They had a penalty lap before the halfway stage of this race. And so uh, I guess the writing was on the wall at that stage. Well, a nice way to start off the meet. Uh, a packed house here in Rupolding in the Shemkow Arena. Norway, Russia and the Czech Republic, the three podium teams. The Norwegians, as we've mentioned, with their second win of the season, having won in Hogfilsen and looking very, very good. Uh, really, the Norwegians impressive. Their first three legs uh, are very solid, giving this lady the opportunity to come home and claim the glory. Tora Berger having more than her fair share of success so far this year. Well, a great night's uh, biathlon uh, action. Mike, the, 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 the action now switches from the stadium to the town centre, uh, where there'll be uh, the prize-giving ceremony and uh, lots, of, uh, lots of beer consumed, I suspect. 108.13, the winning time. Just uh, looking to see how that compares uh, to Oberhof, 120.16, but more relevant would be the uh, World Championship time, 109.33 from Germany, uh, with, uh, of course, one penalty, 10 misses, uh, difficult conditions on the day of the World Championship race. Today, they couldn't have been better. So the programme for the rest of the week, as we've uh, already mentioned, the times on the left of your screen, remember they are European times. I'm sure you're fed up with us telling you that, but uh, just to make a note, an hour earlier than uh, advertised on your screen, a men's relay, 18.05. Your money? Tomorrow is going to be so, so tight. Uh, Russia, for me, feeling good with their exceptional shooting in the, in the men's relay, but it's really just a ski race. The shooting will be that good. Well, a chance just to see Tora Berger enjoying the last 50 metres. Credit to her for pushing so, so hard and extending her lead from 26 seconds to 54. If you had any doubt as to whether she was going to win the overall World Cup uh, at the end of the season, maybe you'll change your mind tonight. That's all for now. We'll see you tomorrow evening. Good night.